From Chicago's Can TV, a look at the week's events is reported in the newspapers, in the blogs and online, and on radio and TV. This is Chicago Newsroom. Hi, welcome to the show. I'm Ken Davis. We are now, depending on whose calendar you follow, a couple of days from the first teacher strike in Chicago in 25 years. And Bill Clinton, he took everybody back to school in his own way, reintroducing arithmetic last night. And uh, he's so it's kind of showing us how a new political curriculum might look. But uh, perhaps the most important political news of the past 24 hours is that folks like Penny Pritzker and her moneyed friends are probably standing right now over at the Verizon store, standing in line trying to get their cell phone numbers changed because Rahm Emanuel, in a move that uh, Stephen Colbert would probably find uh, kind of interesting, has resigned as co-chair of the Obama election campaign. <sighs> but don't worry, folks, he's not going very far. He's just moved over to Priorities USA Action, which is the super PAC, and he'll be spending the next couple of months twisting the arms of the richer people in America, all, of course, without doing any of that uh, illegal coordinating. We wouldn't want him to coordinate. So David Shaper from NPR Chicago Bureau is joining us today. Hey David, how you doing? Great, thanks And for um, we've also had him come over to help us sort through some of this along with Kate Grossman who is the deputy editor of the Chicago Sun-Times editorial board and Paige, thank you for being here. Thanks. So let's start with you. Why not? Because you cover <laughs> education, <laughs> right? right? I mean, and education is everything. Um, the the there's something in the news that's really kind of breaking since yesterday that the teachers opened their pay envelopes and found that they did not get the step increases that they thought the existing contract meant they should get and they didn't get them and they consider that to be a violation of the contract although of course the contract doesn't really exist because it's expired and blah 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 what is what is going on and is it important well so they they found that their step increases which is Teachers get a cost of living raise, plus they get a, a step increase, which is every extra year you teach, you get a raise, basically. And so that's allowed for under the contract, which expired June 30th. And uh, what the teachers union says, they filed a grievance with the Illinois Education and Labor Relations Board saying that, that the state law requires CT, the school system to maintain the terms of the old contract, even though we don't have a new contract. They also filed about a couple other things um, Sure, it's keeping me at the moment, but they'll come to me. But um, and so they filed this labor, labor grievance, and CPS says, no, 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 they the old contract is dead. Mm -hmm. We're working on a new contract, and if if we decide to do step increases, we'll just do it retroactively. What really is is about it's just it's just turning up the heat another notch in this sort of the war between the teachers union and CPS. It also allows them to strike over this unfair labor grievance that yeah, they just yeah, filed. Yeah. Which is just another, you know, piece of ammunition for them. Um, so I mean, it's also weird because the the it looks like the CP like CPS in the middle of well, not the middle of in the very end of negotiations when we're hoping that there's going to be some big announcement in the next 48 hours that you know they've come to some agreement. They're still throwing rocks at each mm -hmm. other, and and for CPS to do that. Wouldn't that indicate that things are are so bad that they just wanna they just wanna throw as I say throw another coal on the fire? I mean this is this is this is this seems so petty to to not give that to not put that money in the paycheck. Yeah, I mean I don't know what their strategy. I I also think you know there's a public relations war going on <laughs> yeah. which does not I think reflect what's actually going on at the bargaining table. I think there's yeah. actually a decent amount of progress happening at the bargaining table and. A lot of this frame, flame throwing doesn't exist when the door closes, and so I, I don't like to make too much of it because yeah, I don't yeah. think you know. For an anxious parent who wants to know, <laughs> right, is school starting right, on Monday? Right, right. You can get really twisted up yeah, uh, in this, yeah. you know, this bomb and that bomb. And I, I think it's better to focus on what's actually happening at the bargaining table. Okay, I think that's excellent advice. Karen Lewis did call the mayor a yes. liar and a bully, <laughs> she though. She sure did. <laughs> I mean, talk about throwing bombs. Yeah. I mean, she, that, she is masterful at that. Yeah, she, she is. And, and how could she say such a thing about the mayor when he's not even in town? He's, <laughs> he's off doing something else. He's, I, I saw him on TV the other night. Well, she's done this before. She's made uh, qu quite a few bombastic statements about the mayor and, and the school board negotiations. She called out uh, uh, John Claude Rizard for, you know, him 
commenting on the, the status of negotiations when she said, <clears throat> excuse me, he's not even at the negotiating table. How would he even know? Mm -hmm. He must be getting this secondhand. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, th this is all posturing at this point, and it's, it's public posturing because they don't, nobody wants to reveal too much of their hand mm -hmm. and what they're willing to give in these final days and hours of negotiations. And so th they attack each other, they posture, <clears throat> and they try to put things in, in, in the best light. I think one of the things that the teachers really want to do is move this away from just a conversation about pay yeah, and I'll being say. portrayed as just wanting more money mm -hmm. and trying to uh, make this a bigger issue about conditions in the classroom and, and how they do their job and how mm -hmm. well they can do mm -hmm. their job. And ultimately, uh, you know, they should be actually, you know, focusing on student achievement ultimately yeah, yeah. as as the Board of Education and the mayor has tried to do all along. So there's actually a, an interesting piece of strategy involved in withholding this little bump of money because it makes the CTU get all agitated about money, which is what they don't, which is what they want the public to perceive they're all about. It is true, but it is one of the key elements of a contract that Mayor Emanuel and his negotiating team wants. Mm -hmm. They want to eliminate the step and the lane increases right, that, right. that are given out for mm -hmm. achieving higher levels of education and certifications and you know, credits toward a master's degree or a PhD. Right, right. And, and, and therefore, if, if you're going to try to take them away, why would you give them mm -hmm. in, in under the auspices of, of the old contract to then just have to maybe, if they mm. win that yeah, yeah. concession, take it away later? Uh, usually contracts, the way these contracts work is is when there is no new contract, the terms of the old contract are in agreement. I'm right. not familiar with how Senate Bill 7, the, the new education law, uh, affects that. So yeah, I'm not sure yeah. if they're on well, firm legal ground. In the past, this wouldn't be legal, but maybe maybe they are able and to this do this. Is, this is and certainly they're not going to give teachers something that they ultimately want to take, take away up front. Yeah, yeah. So the, um, the um, city colleges of Chicago recently came up with an agreement of their own. They, they have an mm -hmm. agreement, right, between right. city colleges and the teachers. And am I correct about this? One of the things that, that they did was they took away the step increases. Is that, is that correct? They did. I think they get a flat 2.5% raise, annual uh -huh. raise. And then they have, a, I think it's 1% or 2% uh, merit raise that they're um, eligible for. Which is exactly what Emmanuel right. wants Although the there is a there's a very important distinction, which is that the, the merit raise for the teacher's college is not, you're my teacher, you're my student, you get a merit raise based on how I do and the 25 other kids, students mm -hmm, in my class. Mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. my understanding is that it's, it's retention rates, graduation rates, it's more universal, that's sort of how the collective is uh -huh, doing. Uh -huh. um, and, I, you know, I'm not an expert on their contracts, so, but, but that's very different. That idea is very different than what the, the merit pay. Just tying I, it to student achievement right. tests. So I don't. I think it's a little unfair to say, oh, the city colleges. That you know, why can those professors do it, but you all can't do it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And not. And I. Not that I'm saying that merit pay doesn't have value, but it's not the same. But what about this the the step increase concept? I mean, all across the country, it's coming under attack, and and it seems to be falling in a lot of places. Is there something inherently wrong with paying professionals who have longevity and have committed themselves to being with your organization for 10, 15, 20 years? Is that, is that a bad thing? I, I honestly, I, that's not a loaded question. I can't figure it out myself. I don't know. You know, I, I think that in the past, the reason that they had these provisions in contracts was to reward continued service and a recognition of the fact that the longer you are in a position, and, and it's really been not just schools and for teachers, but these things have been in place for firefighters, for police officers, and, and all kinds of other workers mm -hmm. in the public and the private sector. Right. But it's a recognition of the fact that the, the longer you are on the job, the more experience you gain, the better you actually are able to understand your job, mm -hmm. uh, work more efficiently. Right, right. Um, and, and accomplish the goals and the tasks that you have before you. Uh, and, and I think that there is a broader movement in, in our country to get away from that sort of yeah. uh, service recognition, if you will. Well, but you know, the, I, I'm sorry. The, Go ahead. The, I think the issue is that, you know, there's pretty clear evidence in teaching that, you know, on average, the fifth year teacher is better than the first year teacher. Yeah. yeah. But is the tenth year teacher really there, better there than is. the fifth yeah, year right. or the yeah, fifth, yeah, you know, yeah. the 13 year teacher? Right. And that's where 
it kind of rubs up against your basic notions of fairness, mm -hmm. right? I mean, why should, and, and also people hang on to the job right. because they know right. they're going to get, and right. do we really want a hanger on yeah. in yeah. your daughter's right. classroom? Well, you know, yeah. I, I, was, I was about to say, I, I worked for the city for just over a decade and, and was beneficiary of step increases. Uh, because oh, so they had them? They, in had, this, they uh, had them even, mm -hmm. even for so bureaucrats like me. this in addition like to your cost of living? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, okay. get, a, you get a little thing. And uh, uh, what I was going to say is that exactly that. It, it's, it, it's good at the front end for keeping talented, maybe younger people to hang around for a while. But at the other end, there were many, many, many people who had been around for 30, 35 years, were absolutely at the absolute top mm -hmm. rank of pay that you can get. And honestly, their value was not great to the citizens of Chicago, any, any more great than a, than a three-year veteran would be. So you really have to wonder about whether that... But of course, teachers, it is a little different. I think it's different for teachers, isn't it? I don't know, maybe it is. I, I don't think it's a full 30-year... No, it's uh, you go to year 13, you get steps, and then... Right. Like you're 17 and 22, you get yeah. one little, little, right. little, right. little right. modest one. And, and even right. even the early years, you get one step per year, but mm -hmm. but it begins to space out. I think after five. Right. Uh, uh, no, I think it's one through 13. You get a step uh, each year. Is it? Okay. Well, but regardless, but it it the philosophy is there that it's that it's it's a tool for retaining good and valuable people who are, after all, teaching our children, but. It, I mean, it does appear to be one of the real hang-ups at the table right now, although none of us, I suppose, I, I think it's worth mentioning that, uh, you know, there have been studies that show in, in large urban districts, and I don't recall what the percentage was in Chicago, but school districts as a whole have a very difficult time retaining teachers mm -hmm. after that you know, three to five year mark, that there is right. an enormous oh, turnover. The burnout must be very 40 high. to 50 yeah. percent within yeah. those first five years. And and those that do make it to that to that five, six, seven, eight year threshold are obviously doing their jobs well and, and are committed and are passionate yeah, about yeah. what they do. But there I think it's it's a legitimate argument to say there's gotta be some other carrots right, involved right. in keeping that experience in the classroom. Well that, that brings us to the other really thorny question of this thing about whether there is another way of compensating, which of course brings up merit pay and as we've said, mer merit pay is not the same thing as you get a few bucks extra if you're if you are able to get your kids to score three points higher on the on you know the the the, the tests. How how can and, and this is not true just it's true for every for every employment situation. Mm -hmm. How can you do an a, 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 a merit system that works. How would you do one at, at the Sun Times if they said we have millions of dollars to give? Right. But how do you do it? Right. It's very hard. Is it how many stories you produce? Is it leadership roles in the newsroom? You know, these things are very hard to quantify. Mm -hmm. Although in education, I mean, we do have standardized tests that have limitations, but they are a, an easier way to quantify than mm -hmm. a journalist, perhaps, mm -hmm. right? Because you know, it's hard to decide. Right. I mean, and this is, I guess the issue, there, there's merit pay, which is very thorny, but there's also this n notion of called differentiated pay, mm -hmm. which means, you know, if, if I'm a lead teacher in my building or a mentor teacher or take on some added responsibility, then I get paid more. That's what Jean-Claude Brazard, the head of the public schools, wants. Mm -hmm. That instead of just every year you get your extra $2,000 or whatever it is, you 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 move you get more responsibility and you're so you're rewarded you're compensated, you're compensated for, that for that which yeah. is sort of like in a newsroom right if mm -hmm. you become an editor you get mm -hmm. more right. you know and so there's they're very limited you know career ladder options in buildings besides teacher assistant principal principal mm -hmm. right and that's so, a very good point because if you go in if, that's exactly right if you go in as a teacher uh, you can 30 years later you can still be a classroom teacher you haven't there needs to be a ladder of some kind. You know, they have found out, found ways to, to do this, though. I know that, uh, and full disclosure, my wife is a Chicago public school teacher. She served uh, as a, a, I forget what they call it, instructional leader over uh -huh. the summer. As they develop, they have this new curriculum coming in, Common Core, and uh, going to meetings over the summer 
uh, she was paid for her time mm -hmm. and, and going to the meetings and, and you know spending some time planning before that. I think it was structured the same way as, as the school day is. Mm -hmm. You get paid for the time in your classroom. You don't get paid for the extra hours you spent preparing to be in the classroom. So would your wife be good, okay with just getting that extra pay and losing her step increase? I, I, you know what? We haven't actually had this <laughs> yeah. conversation. But, uh, there's a, there's I, I will say this. I, I, I think that there is a level of frustration with everything that's been coming at teachers in the last yeah. year or two. Oh, there's no question and this started, about that. This started Right. you know long before this contract expired mm -hmm. last year was an extremely difficult year for teachers with mm -hmm. a bunch of changes coming in mm -hmm. uh, with a new administration coming in and uh, having that four percent raise rescinded last year I think it actually a lot of teachers and and I really uh, you know can't speak uh, of course nobody wants to lose pay but understand that a lot of teachers understand that the, the sort of situation that, that the city is in financially, mm -hmm. that the state is in financially, that there just isn't a ton of money laying around yeah, yeah. that they can they can rely on to pay right. extra wages. But they do see these increased demands of their time, these increased demands of of uh, of just getting th through the, yeah, the classroom yeah, day. Yeah. Uh, the lengthening of the school day, I think, has turned out to be while they had some sort of agreement, I I still don't know that a lot of teachers really know what that agreement really accomplished. That's what we've you know, been hearing here. You know, they're there yeah. that yeah. whole time. Yeah. They get a full lunch, although I've heard that some schools don't even have all the teachers taking their lunch at the allotted lunch time that the some kids are eating. Some are getting reading. it first period. Yeah, yeah. and it's, yeah. it's just, there's a bit of chaos in the implementation of this so yeah. far, and that's adding yeah. to the frustration of these right. talks dragging out this sort of feeling like there's a bullseye on their back. You know? well, I, I want to get to the to the raw politics uh, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, of this, but but Kate, uh, a couple of days ago in your editorials, you wrote a fair and con a fair contract is doable without a strike. Still believe that? Yeah, I I think that I this is and this is my point about the PR war. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a handful of issues. It's pay, you know, it's recall some kind of recall rights for teachers whose schools closed for enrollment or poor performance it's a teacher evaluation and um it's uh what was the other one we we're talking about um well it's in the longer well, school day, the long school day and yeah, the, yeah. right and the merit yeah. pay is now off the table i mean these are not that hard really yeah i just don't i i think that the one of the issues is this frustration that you're talking about which is completely real i have talked to umpteen teachers who just feel beleaguered disrespected overwhelmed but a lot of those issues cannot be resolved mm -hmm. in the contract they're, they're not you know, they're the, not contractual they're issues. not contractual right. yeah. issues yeah. i think that's a very good point um david if I, if I can jump in just just a mm -hmm. little bit here Let, let's get to the uh, speculation department because uh, I heard Andy Shaw riffing live on uh, public radio yesterday mm -hmm. and, and a similar thing with Chris Matthews last night on on cable television just kind of laying out this speculation that just maybe Rahm Emanuel wouldn't mind taking a week or two of a strike that for political reasons it might actually benefit him how well, it would benefit him in the, it, it, that it would play to that conservative base that really, is his, that really is his constituency. And that ultimately it might even help Barack Obama that one of his, uh, one of his deputies, to, for lack of a better term, uh, is standing up to these damn unions because that's the people that they need to convince, the people who are not on board with Barack Obama are people who believe that he's too soft on the unions. It's just crazy. So this is this, what do you think? the thinking is that this would would benefit Obama's re-election campaign. That it might, yeah. and and it might actually strengthen it might actually strengthen the mayor, because a lot of the people who voted for the mayor don't like the teachers union, and they're very happy that he's standing up against these vicious teachers who are stealing all this money. All right, I think you're fishing, but I'll bite. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> I think that there is probably, and after that we'll dis we'll discuss abortion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I I I can see where if if the mayor has an uncertain um, standing, and I don't know that he does, but with uh -huh. the Chicago business community, yeah, and a business community that that politically, in terms of financial support for candidates and in terms of their own personal voting support, may go either way. 
but may not be as tied to the Republican Party on social issues and some things. Uh, certainly mm -hmm. wants to see infrastructure uh, investment and things like that, but do have a fu frustration with public sector unions, mm -hmm. the amount of debt that the city and the state has in terms of its, its pension funds. Uh, I, I could see that this could be a play towards that constituency and saying, listen, this, I'm willing, able uh, to take on these tough public sector unions and and go to war with them and and he certainly does have a su stubborn streak as as mm -hmm. I think we've seen he is a fierce competitor mm -hmm. uh, as we all saw with the uh, the, the Chicago triathlon and, yeah. and he yeah. um, he is somebody who does not want to lose so I think that there there is that possibility however I would say this that I I looking at the bigger picture if Barack Obama is looking at how he can best kind of maintain the, the broad coalition that he brought together to win in 2008, or just have enough of it remain and come out in November. One of the key constituencies that he needs, not just for their votes, but more for their phone banking, their, their knocking on doors, are, are teachers and the unions. The mm -hmm. teachers union, the, the uh, American Federation of Teachers, and I believe the NEA, both endorsed Barack Obama for re-election over like a year ago or two mm -hmm. years. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, uh, historically right, early go. in this process. And with that comes a lot of money, and with that comes a lot of uh, infrastructure support in terms of getting yeah. out the vote. Yeah. And therefore, if he, on the heels of what happened in Wisconsin and what happened in Ohio with uh, Republican governors seeking to restrict collective bargaining and in Wisconsin succeeding, uh, in, in an exhausted uh, sort of group that has been out there, you know, knocking on doors and trying to get people to vote for something, you know, in Wisconsin in particular, mm -hmm. nonstop mm -hmm. for the last two years yeah, almost. Yeah. You know, for him to go to them and say, I need your help, and they turn and see what his former chief of staff is doing in his hometown right. to their brethren in, right. the, in the teachers' right. union, that could pose a little bit of a problem, and yeah. that could pose a problem in that these teachers may not work as hard to reelect Barack Obama. That, I must say, makes a lot more sense to me than the alternate universe thing. Well, I certainly think that the, 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 the power that, that exists in the, not just the Chicago uh, business community, but the uh, n nationally, is certainly something that, uh, that, that the president wants and, and, uh, and Mayor Emanuel wants and it, needs in, in a lot of ways. To it's move. interesting that, you know, as we joked about at the beginning of the show, uh, the mayor is now, his job is calling up wealthy, powerful people and asking yeah. them for more money. And m maybe one of the things they'll say to him is, well, when we see you break that teacher's union, then maybe we'll give you more money. Or not but break, but at least mm. at least rein in. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> right, put a, put a, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. that's, uh, I, no, yeah. I, I think that's a legitimate uh, element of, of what's happening here. And we've certainly seen the Obama administration work probably more with Wall Street than, let's say, at least the Occupy forces would so, like to So see. how, at this point, does Rahm Emanuel square his pro-union convention and his essentially anti-union statements that he makes when he's at home because there's no question about the fact that union people in Chicago feel that he's not on their side. Well, to be fair to Emanuel, he, he doesn't make anti-union statements. I mean, he made one statement in the beginning of the year, which was a big mistake about how <laughs> saying that kids were getting the shaft. Mm -hmm. um, but if you really look at what he said, and the same with Jean-Claude Broussard, they don't. I, I'm not saying teachers don't feel beat up. Well, that was what have, I was, I was yeah. saying, that the, the people perceive him to right, be. Right, but angry. I mean, to be fair, they don't say it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a point worth making. Yeah, yeah. Um, they go to great lengths not to. They might feel it, mm -hmm. I don't know, but mm -hmm. they don't say it. So I, I think the beat up feeling teachers have is real, but I, I don't think that it's coming from the words that they're saying. And you were well, I was just going to add, John Club Rizard in, in particular, I think, has been overwhelmingly praiseful mm -hmm. in his words and actions towards teachers. Um, publicly, he's, he, he is always seeming to lay it on pretty thick about the hard work that they do and that they deserve more money, we just don't have the money to give. And, and, um, and I haven't, I, I would agree, I, I don't think I've seen a real fierce sort of anti-union stance out of Mayor Emanuel, and certainly his, his speech at the convention, uh, I, I don't, I mean, I, 
I'm trying to remember exactly. I I didn't think it came off extremely well, but it mm -hmm. didn't it, it didn't seem to alienate anybody either. And yeah, it was uh, it was a pretty uh, gray speech, and and it was only like five or six or seven minutes long or something, right? Mm -hmm. I think the bigger issue is that you know since Emmanuel you know since the campaign, Emmanuel mm -hmm. has made this longer school day right, his absolute right, number one right. priority, and from then on he was he's. He decided that Mayor Daley for years wanted a longer school day and never got it because mm -hmm. he tried to negotiate with unions and he was unsuccessful and mm -hmm. he was not going to do that. Right. And that was the tone from the very beginning right. and that is why and, we're and, where we are today. And, mm -hmm. and interestingly, that brings it back to an earlier part of the conversation. I, I'm sure that he also feels, as so many people have said in the past, that Mayor Daley never stood up to the unions and by God, he is going to stand up to the unions whether, or, whether the end result is the same as Daley dailies or not, right. it doesn't matter if he, if he can be perceived as, as having gone to battle. Right. And you know what? We need a longer school day. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't agree with a lot of the tactics and strategies the mayor uses, and this may completely <laughs> blow up in his face, mm -hmm. but I don't know how else we were supposed to get a longer school day. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and I, I have to ask you both uh, because this is this is just something coming from my own perception of things. Are you a little bit surprised at how quickly Karen Lewis kind of went from being a laughing stock to being a really serious labor leader in America? You mean the laughing stock because she made fun of? Well, she. I mean, originally there were a lot of people who thought you know she was kind of a, a bit of a buffoon. I mean, there, there was a sort of a perception about that early, very early on, and and boy, they don't. You don't see people saying that now. And being more of a bomb thrower than a than a serious uh, representative of of teachers, possibly. I, I I don't know that I saw that uh, initially. I think some people read into public images and and statements and not seeing the maybe some of the depth behind her. I've interviewed mm -hmm. her a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I find her to be incredibly thoughtful and incredibly um, understanding of the complexity of the issues in the classroom. That I, I want to clarify something here too. I, I, we have had her on this show a couple mm -hmm. of times and, and I completely agree with that. And uh, that, that's not what I'm saying. Just, but there, there was a certainly in the media, there was certainly a public perception. Uh, so how's she doing? We got like a few seconds. How you know, how's she doing? I well, I was at the House of Delegates meeting last night for the teachers union. I mean, she has those troops in order. I mean, they, people were filing out. No one would talk to a reporter. I mean, they had been <laughs> told not to talk to a reporter, and yeah. nobody talked to us. I yeah. mean, that doesn't happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every vote has been unanimous. And, I was going to say, and unanimous I mean, votes. They are That's li never happened. They are lined up behind her. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I think that speaks to one of the other issues that's in the background here, and that is, uh, first of all, an incredibly strong organization that she's assembled at the top of the teachers' union, which mm -hmm. we hadn't seen mm -hmm. uh, the, the last couple of years. Uh, but, but also that one of her key interests that I you know, cynically have to say is retaining members and making sure that, uh, for example, the teachers that, that were laid off and now under the agreement that they reached on just the longer day mm -hmm. can be brought back in and, and rehired at schools to help fill some that of the is, extra needs. That is a critical that issue is a, and, and who are those people going to be loyal to? The mm -hmm. person who kept their job, right. who kept them right. on the payroll. And, and, and the big fear that, that I hear from, from the teachers union and from, from teachers is that more and more and more schools that are underutilized and underperforming are going to be closed in the next and, Well, I mean, we're, we're hearing it could be 100 schools, right? And, and, so. and there's a great fear among the union leadership I think that well with if they lose those teachers those jobs mm -hmm. they lose members who could be counted on for her support so this is also in May there will be another CTU election and, and, and this is so there's those the the, the, she's there. also just like Rahm and everybody else she's up for election right? absolutely okay well that's where we're gonna have to draw the line here it's been a fascinating conversation and of course it's gonna be going on and on and on over the next couple of weeks and we'll see what happens on Monday Monday should be maybe the day of the of the strike so we'll be on top of that, and we hope you'll keep watching us right here on Can TV because you have been watching Chicago Newsroom. It's a service of Can TV, and I want to thank uh, uh, David Shaper for being here with us today, and uh, uh, Kate Grossman from the Sun Times. It's been a, an interesting conversation. You can check us out here uh, on iTunes. You can uh, you can see this this address right under the screen here. You can watch the show anytime there, as well as the uh, podcasts and the iTunes and everything else. You know you know the drift. I'm Ken Davis. Hey, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week again right here on Can TV on Chicago Newsroom. Take it easy.